Hey everyone, my name is Alex Creeley, and today we are at the Spark facility where CFS is building the Spark Tokamak and getting ready to demonstrate net fusion energy on the path to an eventual fusion power plant. So we are now in the operations building. And so in the Spark facility, there's the tokamak in the center and then four buildings around it. And in each building, you have something either going into the tokamak or coming out. So in the operations building, we have data coming out. This is where we make all the measurements of what's going on inside the tokamak so that we can learn from it. We'll do most of the tour today on the second floor. So if you want to follow me up the stairs, uh, we'll continue on the tour. So we're now on the second floor of the operations building. This is where a lot of the data is gonna come out of Spark as we're running it. So we have basically lab spaces where we're gonna make all these measurements. We have uh, specialized scientific instrumentation that measure what's going on inside the plasma, measure what's going on inside the tokamak. Um, and we do this for a bunch of reasons. One of the reasons is that we need to control the plasma and Spark to, to get it up to full power. This actually is a really exciting lab because this is where we measure where all the fusion is happening inside the machines. But with the measurements in this room, we can really localize it, find out ways of making it better, and learn what we need to to go build and operate the ARC power plant. In addition to learning what we need for ARC, um, this is actually also where we collaborate with a lot of the scientific community in the world. We can bring in scientists from around the world, we can make specialized measurements of what happens in these kinds of fusion plasmas, and that will more broadly advance uh, the world's understanding of fusion um, and the world's understanding of plasmas. So next, uh, we'll walk into the building where we put the radio waves in to get the plasma hot. We'll go see that next. So we are now in the radio frequency heating building, but early on in Spark's life, actually this building has another purpose. So we also do all of the assembly of Spark here. We call this the assembly hall. This big open space here in the middle is where all the pieces of Spark are going to come in. Um, we'll bring some from the magnet factory of all the magnets we're building ourselves. We'll bring some in from vendors around the world. All those pieces will come in on trucks and then eventually they'll move into the tokamak hall where we're actually gonna build Spark. So, on that note, uh, next we're going to go into the actual tokamak hall where Spark will be. We'll head on in. So we are now on the second floor of the tokamak hall. So this is where Spark will actually get put together. You can actually see a life-sized decal of Spark on the wall. So that's one-to-one -one scale. You can see the toroidal field coils, the big magnets that'll be coming out of the magnet factory. You can see the vacuum vessel. You can see the cryostat. You can see how it'll all eventually come together. Also behind me, you can see all these big holes in the wall where we'll be making those scientific measurements. So actually, right now, we're in the process of installing some of the more detailed components where all the information from the tokamak will come out and go to the, the measurement tools on the other side of the wall. And last, um, this big hole in the bottom of the, the room here, that's where all the cooling um, and power will come in to get the tokamak ready to run. Um, and that's also where we'll take the heat out um, after we've started doing fusion. So this room's not particularly busy right now, um, but starting very soon, there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming in and out of the room um, and we'll start putting Spark together. So next we'll go talk a little bit more about the radio frequency heating. So if you wanna follow me out this way, um, we'll see what's next. So we are now back in the radio frequency heating building. And earlier we talked about the assembly area. We're gonna bring all those components of Spark together. Now we're gonna look at the pieces of the building where we have these radio wave generators to heat up the plasma and spark. So this is the second floor right now. And actually symmetrically on both sides of the building, we have this equipment. And there's also more radio frequency heating equipment on the first floor as well. Behind me, you can see a, a generator, a, a source for radio frequency waves. So this is how we convert electricity um, into the radio waves that we eventually use to power the, heat up the plasma. And so uh, the plasmas and spark, we heat with radio waves. It's very similar to how your microwave oven works at home. You put, you put food in, it launches microwaves at the food, uh, the food absorbs that, uh, those waves and heats up. So we do the same thing, but rather than microwaves, we use radio waves and we launch those in the plasma and the plasma gets hot. Um, you know, by hot, we mean like really hot, like 100 million degrees, so very warm. Um, and this is the type of technology we'll use to produce those waves. It's actually a relatively novel technology um, that we've developed with a few of our partners. Um, and we're now commissioning this first one. Um, but very soon there will be a lot of these in here. Um, we'll start to fill up this whole floor of the building as well as the floor below us 
um, with all of this equipment um, and get ready to go and eventually get ready to put that heat into Spark. So next, we'll talk about the power supply building, the, the power building, where we have all the electrical power supplies to run the magnets. So actually, on the way to the power building, uh, we'll make a brief stop here and look at the uh, cooling system for Spark. So we're gonna make all this fusion heat. We need to take it out somehow. Eventually, in a power plant, uh, you want to use the fusion heat to heat up water, to make steam, to spin a turbine. Um, and that's how you're going to get your electricity out. And eventually all that cooling water will go to a cooling fan uh, to, to reject the heat um, and to get the water ready again to take more heat from, from the fusion process. So Spark doesn't yet have that full power conversion cycle, but it does kind of have the final step. It does have that heat rejection um, in the form of a big cooling water fan. And so eventually in a power plant, we'll have a bunch more of these because it'll be a bigger plant, there'll be more heat. But this is kind of the first version on Spark. Um, and this is, where, this is where we'll see that fusion heat eventually go. So now we're in the power building. Um, this is where all the power supplies will be that operate the Spark magnets, put electricity in. These are now being manufactured at our suppliers around the world and they'll start coming in soon. Next, we're walking into the utility building. So this is where the fusion heat will be coming out of Spark. So again, you know, we had to talk about heat in, heat out, electricity in, data out. This is where the heat comes out. It's gonna be a pretty big uh, industrial room, a lot of big industrial equipment in it, and some of that's already starting to come in. So there's a lot of stuff out here. This is all uh, for the cryogenic system. You can think of that as a big refrigerator, which keeps the magnets cold. So there's already some of that equipment in here now. More and more will be coming in this year, and we'll start commissioning that system soon, which is really exciting. We'll also have a big helium coolant system at room temperature. And that's where we take most of the fusion heat out. So we are now in the basement of the tokamak hall, right beneath the spark tokamak. And so earlier I talked about how a lot of these buildings are either putting something into the tokamak or taking it out. And, and a lot of that will come right through the basement here. So as we're beneath the tokamak, the radio waves will come through these bigger pipes. Those will be come up from the side and plug into the side of the tokamak. These little small pipes here are actually where all the fuel comes in. So the deuterium and tritium we use to fuel the fusion process will come through those pipes. And uh, soon we'll start installing the, the leads, the electrical leads for the magnets that'll come through this area here. We'll install the big cryogenic pipes to keep the magnets cold. We'll also install the pipes to take the main fusion heat out into the utility building that I showed you earlier. So this is gonna be a really busy area, a lot of stuff going on here, but it's also gonna be really exciting because this is where a lot of the connections to the tokamak happen. So this is our last stop in the tour. Hopefully now you have a little better sense of how all these different buildings work together to make the Spark tokamak successful. Power in, heating in, heat out, and data out is how we'll run this whole thing together. We're very excited about the next steps in this whole project. Equipment's coming in, the tokamak will start coming together soon. So thank you very much for visiting um, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.